question for you. If Scotland headed for another referendum on independence, it looks that way. On Tuesday, the Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon announced plans for a referendum on independence from the United Kingdom to be held in October of next year. Now, that's less than a decade since the Scots rejected independence in a referendum in 2014. We'll talk to a member of the Scottish National Party in just a moment, but first, here's a member of the British Conservative Party reacting to plans for another vote on Scottish independence. She's uh, desperate, I think, now to have a, have a second referendum, even though all the promises were uh, a referendum is a once in a generation. Well, there was a, a referendum. It was all pretty much handed over to the Scottish Parliament to decide on everything from its wording to, to its timing. They had, they had the referendum. Uh, they lost the referendum. Uh, and instead of then saying, OK, hands up, let's try and see if there's a better way, let's try and better the people uh, of Scotland's experience with public services. She's just banged on on the same one-trick pony. All right, my next guest tonight is Stuart Hosey. He's a member of the British Parliament in Westminster for the Scottish National Party. He's also the SNP's independence campaigning coordinator. Mr. Hosey, it's good to have you on the show. All right, you're the campaigning coordinator. Let me ask you, talk to, talk to me about the timing of this. I mean, why now? Why another referendum so quickly? Well, it's not so quick. I mean, we've had three UK general elections in the past seven years. So a nine-year wait with the circumstances massively changed where the Scottish National Party have won every single election in the interim period and where we have a clear, undeniable mandate to hold that referendum. This is absolutely the time to do it. How, how much of um, an impetus are you getting from Brexit or how much of your momentum is coming from a prime minister named Boris Johnson? Uh, I, I think there are uh, three things, actually. Firstly, Boris Johnson is a disaster. Uh, this is a man who is not fit to be in office. Uh, secondly, Brexit did change absolutely everything. I mean, one of the promises which uh, unionism, our opponents, made in 2014 was that we would remain in the European Union. And of course, within two years, they held a referendum in order to drag the whole of the UK out of Europe, including Scotland, where there was a massive majority to remain in. But the third thing is, I think the more the Scots recognise that small and medium-sized countries in Europe, comparable to Scotland, are doing much, much better than the UK, there's a really clear argument, isn't there, that this is not as good as it gets. We need to be in charge of making our own decisions to ensure our economy, our tax system, our welfare system is as good as it can be. You know that London argues that you don't have the power to call a referendum unilaterally. I know that the, the latest polls, said they don't suggest a clear majority in favour of independence. What's your strategy here? Well, first of all, the most recent poll was back to 50-50. But if you recall back in 2014, well, 2013, we started the campaign on 23% of the vote and it ended up 55-45. I'm very confident if we run a vibrant campaign, a positive campaign, uh, we can easily go from the 50% over the, uh, over the winning line. I don't think that's a huge problem. And as for the right to hold the referendum, there is some dubiety about that, but that's why the First Minister announced earlier this week, uh, very importantly, that we were going to have this matter referred to the UK Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So the right to hold the referendum was no longer a matter of political debate or uh, legal opinion. It was a matter of settled legal fact. And once we get that, if it turns out to be legal, have the referendum, and the key thing about this is, in everything we're doing, we must ensure the referendum is legal so that if we win it, there's clear international recognition the following day. Mr. Hosey, let me ask you, um, let's assume you do win. And let's assume then that um, Queen Elizabeth is um, still able to come visit, as she did this week, um, and she comes to visit Scotland. Is she still going to be your queen? The uh, position in 2014 it was that the Queen and her successors would be the head of state. Uh, clearly, that's where we still are in the formal position. 
but as with all things in any independent country, that's a matter for the people to decide later. The issue at the moment is not who the head of state is. The issue at the moment is, do we win the right to hold the referendum? Do we win that referendum? And fundamentally, do we transfer political decision-making from London to Edinburgh and start to improve the economy and the lot of the people of Scotland? I've, I've got less than a minute, Mr. Hosey. I'm going to be the devil's advocate now. If you lose this referendum, that's going to be it for a long time, right? I think uh, there's a very clear recognition that we have the ideal opportunity to win. I'd be very, very confident indeed the people of Scotland will not let go of this opportunity. Uh, I'm not countenancing failure. I think we'll all be going flat mm -hmm. out to win the referendum and return Scotland uh, to, uh, to its place as an independent nation.